is about their dreams. And about those dreams maybe not really meshing. Clint is a master at creating this old style film. It was just a romantic story. It could happen to anybody. All of a sudden, they've gone past where they should have gone with this whole relationship. I read not the whole book, to be fair, but I didn't think that it would be something that I would be interested in. And then my friend uh, Carrie Fisher gave Clint Eastwood my home phone number. And he made me an offer I couldn't refuse. It's very hard to object to her. She's an extremely good actress and very versatile and, and the perfect time in life, perfect age and everything for him. I think Clint at the time was 65 and I was soon to be 45 and I was playing a 45 year old woman, but the studio felt I was too old to play this character. And so Clint made a, I gather, case for me, which I was glad about. And I would certainly have made a case for him. I didn't know anything about Iowa. I just cared that it was America. And I really understood who she was. It was a, a war bride in my neighborhood in New Jersey who lived up the street from us. And her name was Nucci. And her husband was a tall, blonde GI who came home and brought this exotic creature. And she would say, Chrissy, take out the, the garbage. <laughs> and I just was in love with her. I loved the way she talked and moved and spoke. And so I basically copied her. <laughs> It's only four days, huh? Her characterization tells you why she's never going to leave. She was rooted and four square. I worked hard on imagining a physicality for her. And there, you know, this is part of an actor's fun is making sort of a full bodied transformation. There's a sensuality about her, but it's protected. We jumped right into the picture. We, we didn't, nobody. Uh... Sat, we just sit and intellectualize on it. In fact, we were doing it somewhat in continuity. So instead of doing the last scene first, as sometimes happens in movies, we're doing it in continuity. So I wanted whatever awkwardness or clumsiness might have been in that first meeting, I wanted that on the screen. So I just didn't spend much time conversing with her at all until we got into it and we just started shooting. And we obviously came from very different genres in film. So there's that attraction of opposites. That helps the magic potion. I think the film was so successful because of the chemistry between Meryl and Clint. On camera, there was just this, wow. I mean, you could feel this uh, two strangers coming together for that moment. I know that Clint wanted to develop a personal sort of friend and he knew that if they cared for one another on a personal basis, that they, that would come out on film. So both of them made efforts to be very friendly on the set, and it was fun to watch. It was instant. Clint and Meryl were what you always look for in a romance. They had that chemistry on film. You just instantly believed that these two people were deeply in love with one another. You feel the anticipation and it's getting hotter and hotter and hotter, and it, it's crescendoing to that point, and you can just feel that movie just moving that way. It's my experience that uh, the really great directors don't let you feel <laughs> when they're directing you or, or how, or you don't really know. At the end of the shoot, you think, boy, I, I got to do whatever I wanted on that, and you don't realize that you were subtly manipulated to do the things, I guess, that he wanted in this part, but I felt completely free. I remember that after the first take, and we printed the rehearsal and moved to the close-up, and, and Meryl sort of looked like confused, and she said to the group of us, is this how it always is? <laughs> and. And we all said, yeah, this is how it always is. This is, you, you want, might want to get used to it because we very seldom have multiple takes. And unless you say you want another one, 
probably not going to have another one. After about three days, she said, I love this way of shooting. This is so much fun. I don't have to work up to anything. I can start at the top. I can start right at the highest note. So when they, we would be rehearsing, they would be moving the lights and fixing the lights because often he'd say, well, that, that, that felt pretty good. Let's, uh, let's just move on, <laughs> you know? But he had a date on the golf course about 4 p.m. and he made it out there many, many days. <laughs> The fight scene in the kitchen was the moment where the limitations of this dream present themselves to Francesca. It's the morning after. It's when you realize it's over. It's a great scene, and it's the one where, as an actor, Clint wasn't afraid to go all the way with uh, the emotional commitment that he needed. I don't want to need you. What? I can't have you. And then I was so amazed because after I saw the film cut together, he took out sort of the more shaken parts of his performance, which, you know, in the envelope, please, it's like he would have. <laughs> Every actor kills for this scene, and he kind of pulled back on it. And I was surprised. But I think he has a real, real good idea of how much is needed to tell the story on his face and, and how far he wants to push it. It was a very elegant sense of restraint in the editing. It's so interesting about about film because you have this script and you read the script, the script is so, this one especially is fairly densely written. People are just talking to each other. But then in the end, the thing people most remember is a visual thing. It's that hand on the, the handle and him in the rain and her looking out and the traffic lights and the, the missed opportunity. And I think it has to do with the fact that people don't like to be told what to feel in a movie. They like to have it ambush them and feel it and have it and tell the story themselves. They can only do that when there's no talking. And so they have to scream at the screen, open the door, you know? <laughs> there's nothing in that movie that doesn't happen today and didn't happen 150, 300 years ago or won't happen in 150 or 300 years from now because it is a timeless story about a human heart. That's what I go to the movies for, to feel like other people feel, to know what they know, to live in rural Iowa and see an old truck come down the driveway and think, who's this? <laughs> you know, fun.